Welcome back guys. So previously within the past week or so I did post a video on how to do the dual boot mod for your Super Nintendo Classic Edition. That way you could also have the NES Classic operating system on your console. So that was pretty cool and I did make note for you to read the posting because there were some errors and issues with it that you may experience. I don't think any of the errors were crazy to where you couldn't use the system, but it was kind of an annoyance. I didn't have the errors right away, but then I started experiencing them and I could see how it draws you out. So a couple people had told me, hey, there is another version that has fixed that. You might as well try that one instead. So we're gonna be taking a look at that and redoing the entire thing. So I have a brand new Super Nintendo Classic Edition that has not been touched no custom kernel through hack cheat or anything so we're gonna go step by step now the cool thing with this is it does fix all those errors that you would get the c7 and c8 and then it also fixes another big one so once you went into hack cheat and say you'd already done this mod and you added super nintendo games or you synchronized through hack cheat you would lose your dual boot and you would have to re-add that mod every single time that kind of sucked. So with this version, you don't have to worry about that. Your dual boot stays on there. You do not lose it no matter, you know, if you resynchronize or you add games, whatever. So we're good with this one. The other thing that people asked, and I will be doing a future video on this, is that with this mod, you can only add Super Nintendo games to that operating system. The NES Classic side, you're stuck with the 30 games. Well, I will put a link to this post in the description so you could follow along very easily and find all the up-to-date information. But below this first post, which is going to be what we are following, is another post that has a, another way of installing this in order to have full sync capabilities for the NES side of the dual boot, which means through Hackchi you can either go SNES or NES and add games to either side. This one is going to be for advanced users, whereas I would say the normal mod is pretty easy. Anybody can do it. The mod to be able to have sync capability on the NES side, it, more advanced, not crazy. You do have to do some things that you may not be accustomed to while using Hackchi. So that's why we will be doing a separate video on that process at a later time. So back to the dual boot mod and doing it with all the fixes intact and just, you know, being nice, pretty nice little mod. First thing you're going to want to do is go to this page and go to the download right here and get the version 0.3. That's the one that has all the fixes. And then just like the previous version, you will need to get the, the firmware dump from the NES Classic. So you will follow this post and download one of these guys. I believe I have the first one that is listed here. And that is the one we are going to go ahead and use. So from here, there is directions on what we're going to do. But I'm going to assume you have not used HackChi yet. And we're going to go ahead and go about it that way and start up HackChi for the first time. So I have the new version of HackChi 2.21F, I believe. So we're going to go ahead and open that up. Open up HackChi. And now it's going to prompt us. Hey bro, what system do you have? So I have an SNES US version that nothing has been installed on, so we're gonna go ahead and select that. Hello there, pretty good stuff. Go ahead and click OK. So here, we're gonna go ahead and flash the custom kernel. So let's go ahead and do that. Hold the reset, press power, Give it a few seconds for your PC to recognize the system. And there we go. Now it's gonna go ahead and flash the custom kernel. And if you had not done so, you do kinda of wanna make sure you have the original dump. I have mine backed up already. You can use any previous Super Nintendo dump that you have from the kernel. So just make sure you before you do any of this, that you do have a backup of the original kernel just in case. But typically when you flash 
and even if you just go and add new games and then go through the process that way it will dump your original kernel for you but i highly recommend make sure you double check that and back that up make sure you have a backup of the original kernel but if you don't and something goes crazy you can easily find the original kernel online somewhere and use that to reflash the original kernel then your system will be back to factory settings So there you are, we're done with flashing the custom kernel on the Super Nintendo Mini, so go ahead and click OK. And now what has happened in our HackChi folder, we have the games underscore SNES folder. That is one thing we needed for the next step. So you can go ahead and minimize HackChi, do whatever you want with that or close it out, doesn't matter at the moment. One thing of note before we continue. Before I get any comments complaining about my desktop and you know all the icons on it, just remember, this is my desktop. You don't have to deal with it. I do. Thank you very much. Every video I post with my desktop, people complain. And I just wonder, like, why do you care? It's my desktop. But going forward, let's go ahead and continue this. So the other two things that you downloaded was the firmware dump from the NES Classic, which I have right here and then the dual boot mod which is right here so we're going to go ahead and open up the dual boot mod folder and then we do have the dump folder so we're going to take that firmware put it in the dump folder easy peasy so now the next step is going to go ahead and click run and it should just like breeze through i did notice when i did this on another system with this version it does take a few seconds longer than the first version but no big deal, it still goes by pretty darn quick. So as you see, patched binary files successfully, complete, install a resulting HMOD using HackChi and copy the CLV-S-00NES folder to the games underscore SNES folder in HackChi to sync it to your console. So originally, we did not have that games folder if you had not used HackChi, so since we did the custom kernel, we have that folder and we can go ahead and follow that step. So go ahead, press any key to exit. Now the next step is within the HackChi folder, you will have a user mods folder. So let's go ahead and open that. And then what you're gonna do is take the NES Classic Hybrid System HMOD folder and drop that into the user mods folder within HackChi 2. So that part is done. Now the next part is the game's SNES. So we do need to take the CLV-S-00NES folder, drop that bad boy on over. So that part is done. Now we can go ahead and reopen up HackChi. So within HackChi, we are connected to our system. We can go ahead and go to modules, install extra module, and you see we have the NES Classic Hybrid System. So we are gonna go ahead and check mark that. Click OK. Go ahead and go through the process of making sure our Super Nintendo is powered on. Hold reset, press power, give it a few seconds. There we go. Now it should be building that mod onto our system. And that may take a few minutes, so let's go ahead and let that finish and then boot up our Super Nintendo and test her out and make sure everything is good. Okay, so the mod has been done. Go ahead, click OK. You can close out HackChi. Let's go ahead and jump onto our SNES Classic Edition. So here we are, guys. 
the SNES Classic Edition, we do have all our original games and then the boot option to switch to the NES Classic. So let's go ahead and check that out. One issue that I had that was occurring was if the screensaver came on for the NES Classic Edition, it would give me an error the second I pressed a button. So that wasn't very fun. So I'm hoping that has been fixed. Let's give it a moment and let the system sit idle. So there we go, little screensaver boot up. What was happening for me was once this would boot up, if I pressed a button to exit out of it, I would get, I think the C7 error and I would have to reboot the system. So let me go ahead and press a button. And there we go, nice, no error that time. Let's go ahead and open a game. The other issue that we were getting was if you opened a game and then you pressed reset on the system, you would get an error as well with the Nintendo, the NES Classic side. So I'm going to go ahead and press reset. And there we go. Nice. So it did not error out that time. Pretty sweet. So let's switch back over to the Super Nintendo side and see what to do here. Make sure that we don't have any issue with that as well. Open up Ghosts and Goblins. No error there. And I did add all my bezels to the system. If you want to check that out, adding custom bezels, I do have a video for that and I will link that in the description. So that's pretty cool, but no error there. So then the other issue was if you powered down, you would get an error and then you would have to power it down again to power off properly or just remove the power plug. Pain in the butt, did not want to have to deal with that. So let me go ahead and power off and see if it gives us the screen that just says shutting down instead of the error. Beautiful, that is what I'd like to see. So booting the system back up. Let's make sure we got no error. Booting her up. And everything looks to be good. So if this is the, the mod you wanted, this is the version you want to go through because we're not getting any of those errors. I just tested a handful of them that I had experienced and that were in the known issues log originally. So boom, this is pretty sweet. I'm happy with this mod and I'm gonna leave my system in this way. But we will be doing that extra video pretty soon on how you can add games to the NES Classic side of things. So look forward to that. Appreciate you guys stopping in, checking out the video. It really means a lot to me when you guys come in, drop your comments, hit that like button, subscribe, all that good stuff. Really do appreciate it. Look forward to dropping some new videos coming up pretty soon. Got some retro pie stuff, some more SNES Classic stuff and a few little items that I'm going to be showcasing. So I'm looking forward to that. With that said, guys, appreciate it, and I will catch y'all next time. Boom!